far affluent times, these are the new high-speed lanes that link the islands to capital cities, Belfast and Dublin. Two hours does the journey now, but once it was different. Winding roads through every town and pints in every pub were commonplace. But have these arterial routes ripped the heart out of community spirit in our country? Were things better in days gone by? Belfast is where the journey begins, and it's here we introduce you to the team who are going to drink their way down the old road to Dublin. Meet Joe, a TV and radio presenter with an impressive knowledge of all things cultural. His quick wit means he's never ever stuck for an answer, even when he's steamboats. This is Chris, a highly respectable family man and a respected IT expert within a large government institution. By day he lives life by the rules, but by night he goes nuts. Meet Dave, a senior psychiatric nurse who takes his role of nurturing the physical and mental safety of his patients very seriously indeed. In his spare time, he drinks like a fish and becomes a bit of a mentalist himself, though. Here's Kate, the glamorous and heavily pregnant producer. She's travelled the old road to Dublin many times and keeps a stern eye on the lads as they clock up the miles. Meet Liam, a lower dedicated drinker himself. Today, he is the designated driver. And finally, Vincent, the filmmaker who's ultimately responsible for all the nonsense on the road trip. He'll only have half a pint for every pint the boys drink, as we still want to have pictures from the camera by the end of the journey. We're packing a few things for the trip here, a few refreshments, a few musical instruments here. We might get someone to play some of these along the way in one of the old pubs. Uh, you never know, a ukulele and a kazoo. We also have a red marker pen. This is just to mark our progress on the way down. And if we're feeling brave enough and the uh, booze has kicked in, we might reveal this at the end of the trip. We'll see if we can get away with it. And there we go. It's 8 a.m. and the gang gather at Belfast's iconic Europa Hotel. Let the drinking begin. There are three blokes getting blocked on the way to Dublin. With, I'm not getting with a woman who's <laughs> ready to pop, right? So we could <laughs> theoretically wind up in casual thing, okay? The woman who's ready to have a baby. What could go wrong? Really? You no. have a... Uh, made it a lot quicker and uh, easier and uh, stopped the traffic from the old roads. So I think today getting down the old roads will be easier because there's no traffic because of the new big roads. You get a drink? Hey, look, you get a drink? drink. Oh. More reliable than any taxi, here's Liam the driver. <laughs> Are you Liam? That's why he's driving, because he's lame. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun joke I'll get today. <laughs> boys. Hi, Len. We're good? Right. No matter what we say, just, just disregard us. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Any, any uh, racism, bigotry, sectarianism, or uh, sexism? Oh, don't worry, so I'm not the easiest man. It's part, part, <laughs> part of the course. <laughs> there was a motorway here. In the 60s. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> yeah, as far as Lisbon, then the rest is all small goals. What's that? I don't think about bridge. What do you Bombridge. think of Bombridge? What's in Bombridge? Bombridge. What's the F, Ken? Bombridge. Uh, Gaelic. Wait is Bon. Therefore, Bombridge. Wait Bridge. And uh, according to legend, Q Holland lifted it and threw it into the sea at one point, uh, which is now called uh, Madagascar. Uh, and that's why Madagascar in Irish means uh, White Island. <laughs> Have you ever heard such shite in your life? True. They've only been on the road for 40 minutes, but something tells me these lads are taking the piss. <laughs> this is part of the old road here in Uri. Everybody had to come through here. <laughs> Traffic used to be tailed back right through Uri. It took you about 25 to half an hour to go through Uri. Uh, once you were through Uri, you knew you were. We're across the border, just about to feel about it. <laughs> it's far closed. It is closed now. You see bars like this, both sides and stuff, kind of thing. 
there's a gold mine of stuff in there. Yeah. Right? It's like we see old cinemas closed, like you think there's probably hundreds of posters in there, film posters, of movies that you saw when you were a kid. Like. I think that's where Ian Bale is in for these cameras. He's been held. And you're in native reminiscence. See around the other door, there was a wee hatch of me, just go over and get a bag of crisps and a bottle of orange, and they'd be putting a wee brown paper bag. Any, anybody that was playing in in the RDS or whatever would have would have gone into murders. The bypasses be taking people out of the town. Yeah. People used to have to go through New York and you stop off, maybe have a wee drink, have a pint, have a bit of lunch. So bars like this go under. And you want to take a wee letter from murders away with us? Come on. We'll take a letter from it. Fine. The shit hole anyway. <laughs> Right, we've got a murder's bills anyway. This is like this, you know, they're closing down because of the motorways, you know. The old road to Dublin, you would have stopped off here, truckers would have stopped off here. It's the most popular bar in this part of Ireland. It's the biggest lot of crap ever. It's and not you crap. think it's brilliant it's because you love it. It's thing. not crap, you love it, pubs. You used to get a pint of harp here, and now you can't get a pint of harp. And this is all that's left here, a pint of harp. I'll bring it with me, actually, and screw that. <laughs> That big dramatic gesture meant nothing. It meant nothing to me. Liam, fire up the wagon, son! <laughs> In the back, wagons roll. Come on, son. This be the um, main road all the way through the dock. Yes, Liam, very interesting. I'm really busting my balls to know what's in Davy's green bag. Just along here is where the border used to be, and in years gone by you would have seen a, a military presence, perhaps up on a podium or a pole of some description, and it wouldn't have been unreasonable to uh, actually back and get stopped and have your, your car searched, and your person, uh, all your belongings, what you had in the car were all went through the fine tooth comb. Um, thankfully it's not like that now. Yeah, but back then you used to get that going to the airport. That was commonplace, like. And that was totally uh, commonplace. Uh, but, uh, you go to the, the centre of town, you get searched. Well, if you went to the bottom of the street, probably yeah. went to the shop, the bag, yeah, you, you get searched, right. You would have got stopped and searched. Yeah. And, um, Did David get searched? Yeah, he got searched. Oh, I was searched every night. Every night I was searched. Yeah. He used to call around to my house and search me. Just was was the only <laughs> thrill he got back then, Just for jollies. Yeah. The only yeah. thrill he got, yeah. like. The roads. Uh, Martin's real change on the north and the south. No problem. So I find that I find that bizarre. Like you know, Dublin seemed to be this place that was like miles away. Uh, it's oh, like a hundred miles down the road. Like, well, I'll tell you, it's story. not much. I'll tell you, too, see, whenever the uh, relatives used to come over from America, my dad always went down to pick them up at Dublin Airport, and this is maybe about like even going back to my thinking about twenty-five years ago. And in those days, there was no McDonald's back up north again. So what I used to do was, he went to the airport, picked them up, went to McDonald's, bought us all. And McDonald's eats. <laughs> and we're back to up bring there. back the Belfast. Bring back the Belfast. Three so hours later. Me, we didn't have we didn't have microwaves then, so everything was heated up in the grill of the oven. That was tasty. So it was best. better. It was better. <laughs> <laughs> and it tasted like heaven. Oh, but to be fair, I used to bring back dead cats as well. Well, <laughs> fair enough. <for> <laughs> and I learned shit he found. Them. <laughs> All that talk about burgers has taken Liam's attention off the road. And he's got them lost. We're currently driving around a roundabout because we found that there's a tiny old road. That's how far, that's how far it's gone. That's that's that is the problem. Like the road is here, we're all this Fourteen miles from the border is the town of Dundalk. And the first proper stop of the day. It's quarter past ten in the morning. Believe it or not, we're going into the kilns for a couple of pints of clean. Guinness, or whatever the fancy heart. Because <laughs> Kate's pregnant, we have to drink for two. Bless her. You see before, like the bypass, like the Dundalk bypass happened, right? Yes. Do you get more traffic through the bar than you do now? We actually do get more now, yeah. 
You can get more yeah, no. back then. No, 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 no yeah. You get more now. Yes. How come? Because people can stop in the town now. Before that, they couldn't get through the town. It was just, it was a complete bottleneck. Yeah, because the dog was your big you, problem. You couldn't, you couldn't get the through. But now, now the people with the trucks and that, you can bypass the town, and the people who want to stop in the town can do so. Do you see much change yourself, like in the in the country, in say fifteen uh, years? Oh, it's, it's uh, we are well, new. We are here now since we're here fifteen years now, down in September. But the the town has completely changed. When we came in here fifteen years ago, every second building here it, it was either for sale or derelict. Is that right? Yeah. Ours was, yeah. But um, this last ten years now, the whole thing is all. Well, boom, yeah. Yeah. You see now uh, the way the, the new roads have come about, uh, the border's not even really there. Well, it's in the next few years like it'll be so much better. Yeah. Straight from Dublin to Belfast, like it'd be a two hour trip. Aye. Oh, it's, oh God, it's marvellous. Yeah. 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 Well, well, they might take a Probably. More people come from the north back up. Right. Is the main change. Uh, and what, what do you think are the main reasons for this sort of thing? Do you think anything to do with the new roads coming in? The new roads have had, uh, but uh, the troubles, are, the peace things, the big factor, you know, that's that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. There'll be people saying that I'm looking for that fella for 20 years and I can't find him. That's all I'm fucking afraid, that's all I'm afraid of. They know where they are. Neighbours aren't neighbours anymore. Mm. Well, no, I, 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 I live in a, in a house now and I wouldn't know the people four doors down. Mm. Well, years ago. Well, many years ago, you've known everybody in the yeah, street. Everybody in the street. Yeah. Big, big change, yeah. <laughs> big change. <laughs> when the M1 goes the whole way to Belfast, it'll be absolutely brilliant. And also, the, there are a lot of new developments here. And uh, we now have an ice hockey rink, which is amazing. But I ever think there'll be an ice hockey rink in Dundalk. Exactly. I think we're going stone mad. Here's Dundalk's answer to Billy Connolly. Hey, what do you want? Are you, are you, are you from Dundalk here? I'm going to Dundalk last weekend since the day was born. Where are you from? I'm from the country. The co where's the country? In Curly. Where? In Curly. You've never heard tell of it. I've never heard tell of it. Where is it? It's in the middle of Nova. What county? What county is it in? How long have you lived in Dundalk? I've been living in Dundalk for 50 years from the country. For 50 I'm years from the country? I'm just me here that's all. Can I leave now? I need to go to Dublin. We're all leaving now, go ahead. Because I've come and put them south so I'm coming famous to where I am. Man, you're, you're born to be famous. Look at you, you're born to be famous, man. You've got, you got the, 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 fleur. Well, I'm, the fleur. I'm getting this hair cut on the 26th of the talk for Alzheimer's and cancer, charity. Are you? Yeah, whole lot goes. Whole lot, your beard, your hair, yeah, everything. Yeah, with no one stop. Jesus, <laughs> take your hat off again. Look at that hair. Dad, I think going to get a place. Nice see you. All right, man. All, All right, right. Enjoy. 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 enjoy yourself. Thank you. Down the news. Thank you. What I'm saying to you is we're in Dundalk, right? I expect, I actually expected when I came here, people from Dundalk to go, do you know what? The bypass is taking loads of business from us. But they're not saying that. What they're saying is the bypass is taking all the lorries out. But the cars are stuck coming through here. What are you now on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 to 10, I'm a 1. <laughs> Joe, what scale are you? Scale of what? 1 to 10, drink wise. I might be on a 4. Ah! I've been sitting pretty on a 2.4 still. Good pug. Who says drink doesn't make you emotional? Almost overcome, Chris takes time out to enjoy the street entertainment. Remembering their mum's advice never to drink on an empty stomach, it's time for some grub. He's been drinking all all night and uh, he still is really good tipsy. 
so he leant over and he's very long armed and took one of the toys and I didn't think he'd reach. But that's what that's what I wanted to just say to the girl that we paid for because we don't want the guards after us and cameras or anything. So we're not all right. Thanks, Thanks very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you. Okay, all the best. Bye-bye. That was also taken from the establishment. <laughs> 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 has this town changed in the last 15 or 20 years, Paul? Definitely, has it? Yes, yeah. definitely. With um, all the foreigners, all the foreigners. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, the foreigners are just terrible. No, they're welcome. <laughs> Everybody welcome. I'm a foreigner. I'm here 30 something years now. Um, it's me, Dundalk is not the place it used to be. But the community spirit's gone. And the, drink smoking, a roll. and the smoking ban. What do you think of it down, down home? Ah, oh, sure. You, have you to, get used to it. You get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't like me seeing smoking on the street. It's not ladylike. And we're ladies. All the best. Enjoy yeah, Dublin. Yeah, yeah, and don't get too uh, drunk. Bye-bye. Okay. Life in the town carries on as normal as the Liam Mobile heads further south. Did the dock have like the, uh, it would have been the old road, out the Fairways Hotel. Fairways Hotel is known as Last Chance Hotel. It's the newlyweds and nearly deads. <laughs> <laughs> he's done a wee night in it. After a wee pass, I think he's a little Now people that enjoy towns and uh, enjoy a bit of scenery and enjoy a bit of culture and a bit of uh, their native yeah. land will stop off at these places and it seems to be that these pubs and towns are enjoying prosperity because of that you know because people don't want to drive from Belfast to Dublin say we'll take a wee nip down to the yeah, yeah but you know what yeah but you know what that's not what we expected though is it no it's not what we expected was to hear that Dundalk was suffering because of the bypass that's not on and on and over the hills to Saxton's Pub on the outskirts of Dundalk for another pint before midday. But there's a bit of a hitch. Now you know you have a problem when you're knocking on windows to get into the pub before noon. She's pregnant, she got stuck at the bar. <laughs> well, I used to be all the actions in the old road. Really severe. Bad accidents in this road. A lot of people lost their lives. I think what we were expecting was to go into a pub and an old boy to say, This place has turned to shit. Yeah, since they built that fucking road, they've been sitting here. There's no business. To fly past this town, our community's dead. The Gaelic's dead. The nuns are dead. The children are dead. There's none of that, you know. We're all fucking. <laughs> we're all fucking happy as Larry. Next up, Castle Bellingham, a favourite stop for punters on the old road. There. Yeah. Alright, we've got three wee bucks over here, right? Yeah, I've got to go for sale, though, yeah? What about you, boss? Well, you will. Sort of trying to get a bit of the old atmosphere back again, whereby people had a, you know, a few pints the way down, a bit of crack, you know, and we're just trying to get a bit of local sort of comment on the thing, you know, really. I think, I think it still happens for the very simple reason is, as you can see, any any time during the week. That road there is as busy as it as has ever been. Oh, there's a new road, and there's a new road. Oh, there's a new road. Oh, there's a new road. When you have a mile away. Now than it was twenty years ago. Well, no, it's busier now. Twenty years, five years ago, before the motorway opened, you couldn't cross that road. You sat there for fifteen, twenty minutes before you could cross. Twenty years. But surely, though, more traffic meant more custom to the town, to the village. All the roads are here. All the fun of the EEC money. For the simple reason, the government don't put the money into the roads. Very informative. Hi, Bernie. How you doing, Pat? How are you, love? You're right. Hi, hi. Oh, hello, Pally. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're not last for armed robbery. <laughs> <laughs> You're not last for armed robbery. Hey, well, is, is this your wife? No, no, no. no. I wish you was the little man's wife? I, I, I wish you was. You was the little man's wife there after armed robbery? Are you on a promise? Yes, sir. I've been married three years, right? By the time I'm married 40 years, I'll be lucky if I can raise a smile, let alone anything else. I'll be lucky if I can raise a smile. Like, oh, I can't, I won't be angry. Oh, I had a warning here one day. Would you, would you have a bit of Viagra about you? No, I The Viagra, he had a Viagra yeah. tablet. Did you? It was. Did you really? I never used it, you know, I never, I was keeping it off. Is that emergencies? It was an emergency. Emergency. You see, Joe, I took Viagra once, right, and it stuck on my throat. I had a stiff neck for two days. Well, I, <laughs> a stiff neck for two days. Well, I never. I, this, I used, this used to be the main thoroughfare to get to Dublin, right? That's right. correct. Right, That's so correct. now you have the new road that takes you way past this. That's correct. So, how's it changed, like, since that's happened? Big time. Big time. How's, how's, how's big it changed? Big how's time. How's it changed? Big time. Uh, an awful lot of houses. It's after going up, but they're not being sold. The houses are not being sold. Why not? Looking for too much money. Well, has it affected your community here? No. Yes. No, yes, yes. which is Yes, because we don't know the people that's moving in. Years ago, we knew everybody. Everybody knew everybody. Today, I could pass somebody in the street and I don't know them. Would you welcome to like strangers? Did you give the uh, Entertainers Award in RTE a few years back? Twelve years ago with Helena Mansfield and Derek Davis. Remember them? Yeah, very good. Very good. That's the opposition, bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give us a, a half a song to the camera. A song your choice. Well, I, yeah, when exactly. I sing, I have to sing. I don't really sing. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. blast it. I just blast it all the lines. Oh, jeez. Right. Yeah, you'd never see it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the only chance to get the no, Right, right now. How long does it take you to get to Belfast? 40 minutes. Right. How long did it used to take you to get to Belfast? It used to take me to make me sandwiches in the morning. I'd get ready in the morning and make me sandwiches. And then I'd head to Belfast. You'd make a pack lunch. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd stop on the way. Yeah. And you'd have your pack lunch. And then you get there. Yeah. Maybe two hours to get to Belfast. Wasn't there, wasn't there better crack in the other days? Or? There was. Why? Great crack in the other days. It's all Russian, like, you know I mean, like, they're, they're, the quicker you get the band fast, do a bit of uh, work and that and get home, and it's all the time Russian, there's nobody uh, having time for the, to sit down and have an hour conversation like we're having today. Like, uh, my senses, like a night in the forest. Like the mountains in springtime, like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean. You fill up my senses, come fill me again, come let me love you, let me give my life to you. Let me drown in your laughter, let me die in your arms, let me lay down beside you, let me always be with you, come let me love you, come love me Friendships form so easily over a pint. Sure, where else in the world would you get it? Where else in the world would you get that? I mean, that is uh, classic Irish hospitality. And, uh, you know, they're obviously uh, very keen to have visitors from the north. 
and elsewhere. So uh, I think an action use basis will be interesting to see if there is a copy to accept visitors such as ourselves, you know. Can I borrow your kazoo? Yep. It's right here, right? Just the bang. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Come on. Come on. I don't think the locals are digging the kazoo renditions. <laughs> I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. We would always get our regulars, especially from, from the north, coming down. And they'll come down regardless, yeah. you know, of what road they're on. Has that always and been the case? That's though? always been the case. That's always been the case. People would seem to go out of their way if they want to go to somewhere, especially if they want to go for summer to eat, and they kind of plan their journey around calling to the castle. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, the, with the road, the road has now probably opened up the market for us for... Uh, Dublin, yeah. people actually coming from Dublin because most of, most of the time when people arrived into the country, they flew into Dublin airport, they actually went south. That was yeah. always the case. Yeah, they yeah. never would have come come north because of various reasons. But now when it is like we are uh, we are really only 35 minutes from the airport. Did we clear the bar? <laughs> in furnace, did we clear the bar? No, I could do with you at about 2 or 3 in the morning now. <laughs> really? Should we come back then then? Yes. <laughs> Should we come back at 2 or 3 in the morning and we'll clear yeah, the bar? On the way that's, home. That's a, that's a date. We'll be back. I named that tune in one. <laughs> How's that? I'm just thinking, you know, everyone around here is very optimistic and uh, saying that the bars along the old roads of Dublin are doing very well. But well, why is this perfectly good bar not doing well? It's closed down. You have a fucking great car park there. Look, can you see the car park? Look at the car park. That's the best car park I've ever seen. Kids should be on that with rollerblades and scooters and joyriding. But no, there's nothing. There's nothing there. I'll tell you what, then we'll have to come back. Right, okay, we'll if we just come away from this conversation for one, and point the camera just over here at the door. Um, I think that's all our questions answered in that one, really. Um, I don't think it's anything to do really with the uh, prosperity of the town. I think we're just going to do the place up and uh, hopefully reopen it as a better bar. Uh, they can renovate the bar. I think the lads will be making some alterations themselves. The frigates out of Ireland is what we need. Ah, uh, good lad, Joe, well done. That's what we need well to get the frigates out of fucking Ireland. Yep. Do you know I hear about that? The thing like that, getting frigates out of Ireland. The Irish went to every single country in the exactly. world. Exactly, went everywhere. Yep. See, here, we can't take a fee. Yeah. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. You're right. With their good deed done, perhaps the crowing cock has hit hard times after all.
there's Dave's cargo again. What the fuck's in that green bag, Dave? This block 23 on a Saturday night. It's a great crack, isn't it? That's a fucking great crack. Don't get me wrong, it's a great crack, but it's a, it's a scandalous day of the first case. I'm not sure why not. Kate, what was you looking at me at the moment? A big pint of plane. Monaster Boys in a family favorite and a great spot for a debate. I'm getting is that uh, there's a certain characteristic in people and uh, if someone wanted to go to these old places uh, they would have went anyway regardless if there was a new lovely bypass or not Hanula baby where'd you get those eyes and sweet complexion I had a lie chatting with a guy in there and he said like their business is booming but like down the road I was asking about the cool cop and he said well it just depends Maybe they're just, this is a landmark. Honolulu, baby, where'd you get those eyes? Sweet complexion, I love I'm loving it. I think it's, I'm having great crack today. It's great. And take the old road is a worthwhile venture because if you take the new road, all you'll see is, now granted, these very modernist structures like the bridge and all that, which is awesome looking when you go down to Dublin, but... If you take the old road, you'll get more of the character of her. Bye, Alabama. Bye, Alabama. Bye, Alabama. Dublin's getting uh, huge. So, out of suburbia, it's reached as far as Omeath, Newry, and Dock. So, just the centre's just keep, it's like throwing a stone in a, a, a river. It just ripples right out. That's what's happened with Dublin. Yo no soy marinero, soy capitán, soy capitán, soy capitán. And if we, we, we do choose to go this road, it's of our own being. But what we've established so far is that people in the pubs and in the towns that we've been so far have said to us that the creation of the new road has given the towns more, more credence and more belief in themselves. How many people want to go the good road, the new road? For, for, for handiness sake, yes, we'll get down in two hours and they're in Dublin city centre, brilliant. But what, what have they got in the way down? Nothing. Oh, they don't want anything. Why would they? Why, 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 if, if you want to get somewhere quickly, you don't want to stop off. It's what different between uh, people who, who want to, uh, I mean, uh, I'm not talking about tourists, sorry but... Interrupt, uh, sorry to interrupt. Can I just give my point of view? It is that I think that compared to 30 years ago, the whole society is, is much too affluent. And I think as, as a result, it has affected us as people and a community. And I think... Yeah, but how do we less, know that? We're less... Was, less Fendi, go to Marks and Spencer's no, but, no, on a Saturday no, no, afternoon. No, but Fendi, that was 30 years ago. We have, we have no frame of reference. Ah, we we, have, we, no, we, we don't. We don't. We live through it as children. Yeah. Like you're you're same age as me, thirty six. Yeah, you talk to your parents. No, talk no, to your no. But thirty years ago, we were six years of age. Do you know what I mean? People t- people said hello on the street. You knew your neighbours at your own admission. You know. Those yeah, no, I know that. Seems, I know that. I, I think. I think. Now you may think this is a bit outlandish, but I think that's because 
corporations are all really you have now. You don't have the corner shops as much or anything like no, that. No, I know that, but the thing is, no, the thing is, though, our, our the thing is, our Ireland had to progress because Absolutely. you know, in, in France, but how far? Like, I'm just thinking about my business plan. That's all I was thinking about. I think I'm going to put a toll bridge on the, the old road. <laughs> That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would work as well. What? We're, we're in early days, you know, we're still plenty of pains to be drunk, and uh, I'm sober as a judge. And uh, I think by the time we get to, you know, Dublin, I'm probably going to fucking kick some ass. I think this is great. I think it's a great project, and it's getting us all together, it's getting us all talking, having a drink, and yeah, the nostalgic. You have to move with the times, and I just think it's, I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a great day. And, Wise words, as only from the mind of a woman. Yeah, we were here. No, we were here. We were here. Yeah, all of us were here. Uh, um, my aunt Bridget yeah. um, always took us to see Oliver from Plunkett's yeah. Head in the oh. chapel down here and I always find it frightening because <laughs> it was black. <laughs> no, I don't mean, I mean it was yeah. like... Uh, shriveled up. Shriveled. <laughs> yeah. But it always scared me then at night chair? thinking about it. Oh, look at those bonds in that shop. New road or not, Drogheda is still a nightmare for traffic. Did the new road not alleviate the traffic in Drogheda? A wee bit. Well, the problem now with Drogheda is, it's like we were talking about earlier on, it's all starting to get built up again, with housing, uh, out of town outlets, stuff like that. Look at them, driving past a pub. Bloody amateurs. <laughs> I just crank call my mate. I've done it four times already today. He loves it. <laughs> I wouldn't know about bringing that well, but there is a wee pub in it called the White Heart, and it's a um, good wee pub. There's plenty of crack in it. But before the boys get to the pub, there's another stop in store. We're just uh, found this wee novelty shop and uh, it's got some lovely items, so we're going to buy some stuff. It's for you, Guardian Angel, for when you have your baby. Aww. That's for you, from us. Oh, that's right. That's oh, thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. So that's, that's from us. That's lovely. I was going to buy him a, a ball bag, but I don't have him. It's right now, it's Bob Brigham. Bob Brigham. Right. Into Bell Brigham's white heart it is then. Uh, I'm a McCormick, I'm seven generation publican in this town, right. Right. <laughs> right. and um, the old road used to come down through the Man of War, right. the Man of War pub, and um, they were the first stagecoach stop on the Dublin Belfast Road. Right, back when the station was coming through. Yeah, right. and the old pub there has been there since 1640-something, that was the first right. license. Have you seen a drop in, a, in a takings since the new road? Um, the bypassing right. in a, a, originally, all that trade died. Right. And we're talking about the late eighties when our bypass first happened. Right. We've only been re re bypassed in the last three or four years, and that hasn't affected at all because of the mental construction and building that's been going on in the town. The they come along now, and they see all these young people and different people and different breeds coming along. And it used to be like a local for a lot of these elderly people, and now all of a sudden it's not there anymore. The characters are more or less gone. Characters are almost extinct. So maybe your view depends on the generation you're from? Correct and right, yes. Yeah, very much so. The greatest thing I ever, uh, I ever heard in, in the pub is, is if you ever want to know someone, look at their friends. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're sitting in your own in the corner with your Rolex watch, with your BMW sitting outside the car, 
Yeah, you're a nice guy. <laughs> but no one wants to know you. <laughs> <laughs> couple of pints there, and a few, a few of the guys here have uh, recognised you off the TV. I just brought up a couple of uh, bookies that got somewhere to get an autograph, which is quite good, you know. <laughs> I love to hire me! For fuck's sake! Can we stay for the night? Well, they're going to Dublin first. Can we come, come back here? Can we come back this way? Can we come back in for a pint later? Yeah, Here's the point, right, right. Either we're going to go Connell Street and do nothing, or we'll stay here and go. <laughs> 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 We're doing a double attire, right? <laughs> 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 Fuck on Carl Street, let's stay here. We're standing here up on the pole. Yeah, we're too. Stand up there for a second. Oh, sure. It's been a bad day. Now, my slip on this, I'm going to go out there working the solicitor. Yeah. Riverdance, eat your heart out. Well, the people in the last bar were in there, the people appeared to be, um, it didn't make a difference to them whether it was a new road or no, or people were taking a new road. For fuck's sake. I hope you got that on film. Liam, you're going very fast. Oh, Liam. <laughs> I mean, do, you want, do you want to take your fucking hand? Just get your boots out. If I spill my fucking beer once more, Liam, I'll fucking wreck this joint. I will wreck this joint. Like, like, alcohol does, and, well, alcohol impairs everything, but it kind of makes you more tolerant and more, it brings everything to the surface in a lot of ways. Like, If absolutely hammered, falling down drunk is 10, I'm at a good meaty 7. One to ten, I would say. I'm probably sitting between four and five. One. What is he, Christian? I would say he's probably around seven point five. <laughs> no, I'm not all about four. One thing I do object to is the fact that Thundercats isn't on TV anymore. I don't play in a bar. miles of B Road, 10 pints per person, and it's taken almost 11 hours, but they've finally made it to the fair city, and we still don't know what's in Dave's bag. Joe, Chris and Dave pile out of the car and on to find nightlife. And that bastard Dave still won't tell us what's in the bag.
With all the pubs Dublin has to offer, the lads still find themselves drinking on the streets, but not for long, as Chris spots a member of the Garda Shikana from the corner of his eye. Dublin's one of the most fucking vibrant cities you'll ever be in. Dublin's a really vibrant, vibrant city. London is too impersonal, whereas Dublin is a very personal city. But it's all a rush. You can go out any night you want in Dublin. There's something happening. There's something happening. Everybody's doing something. People are rushing quite. Look at this. this is O'Connell Street, right? This is the equivalent of Royal Avenue in Belfast, right? Obviously, there's a big difference, right? Thanks, thanks for that. That was good. We just needed that. That's good. No, you're all right. What's this all? Right, you, know, you go to Bob Brigham, right? Come on for radio station, eh? Yeah. What one? Uh, cool, cool FM. Cool FM. Yeah! Yeah! Another fine example of Irish hospitality. That's Dublin for you. Right. So we're going to tell you a guard, but they're really an ugly uh, bastard. Of course, <laughs> Dublin vibrates constantly, and that's what it is. Okay. And to come down here and drink on the way down, and to do Balbriggan, and to do Dundalk, and to do all the towns coming down here, which what people did in the 70s, had to come through that and drink a pint in every bar. By the time you get here, you're a wee, you're a wee bit askew, like. You're a wee bit drunk, a wee bit askew. Yes, yes. <laughs> what I found was that um, people are tolerant of us coming down from the north to the south and popping into their bars and having the paint. I think surprisingly people uh, along the road to Dublin are uh, very much the same and have the same community spirit. In fact, I think even more so. Where you see when you get home and you've had a good day, it's a day to remember. It's actually an experience, and it's probably, I would actually love to. Maybe the next time we're down to Dublin, maybe even stop in a couple of those places, because it was actually very enjoyable. I had this idea originally when I saw the new road being built, and it's only recently been opened in the last couple of months, and uh, to be honest, I thought it was a brilliant excuse to look at things about attitudes to drink and how society has changed. The society has changed, but I think the Irish heart is still the same. Davey, what's in that bag? I've been wondering all day. We all have, what's in the bag? It appears to be some sort of little vase. All right. Banana, is it? Oh, 
Come, Joe, off the phone. This is no time to be talking to the wife. There's work to be done. What can I say? Quite a day, eh? And all the time I'm going down the old road, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if it was like this all the time? See, this, this is a thrusting example of Dublin's... Of, <laughs> thrusting example of Dublin's culture. Look at the thrust into the sky. It's like the spire on a <laughs> Come across some colourful characters. I've spent it with some good friends. I'll do it again any time. Just do the old road to Dublin. You will never forget it. It is absolutely unforgettable. Take the old road. It's kind of like life itself, right? You can take the quick route, or you can take the scenic route. And the scenic route is wonderful and strange and bizarre and interesting. So why wouldn't you take it? That's the old road to Dublin.